this is my last video, part two, and the one you're hearing now is actually part three. And um, they've been unscripted. They've been a little bit complicated to listen to and watch. And that's because I'm really just recording myself throughout the whole process here. Once again, the topic is how to play music with your Arduino with the use of <clears throat> an SD card. So before I get into the progress on my project and the coding in my project, I thought I would go through the steps of using Audacity to create WAV files that you can play on your Arduino through the use of your SD card. I don't have iTunes, so I won't do it that way. But I will just try to show on screen how this all works. All right, so here is Audacity. I've opened it up. The project rate in Hertz recommended somewhere between 32,000 and 11,025. I watched in another TMR PCM video that recommended 16,000 as the Hertz rate, so I will select that one. Whether you have to select it first before you start recording, I'm not really sure. I think so, and that's just how I'm going to do it. Because I did notice that after you record your sound file, that you can change the hertz rate and adjust it. I'm not sure what that's doing, but I thought, well, before I even begin, I'll put the hertz rate at 16,000. I've got it set to microphone, although you could have it set to stereo mix, which means that you can record things that are playing on your computer. So you could even record YouTube video audio using Stereo Mix and then create an audio file that way. Although historically I had some troubleshooting to do when trying to get Stereo Mix to work. So that might be something you could encounter. Off camera, I recorded it. Hi, how are you? How you doing? Okay, so I drew this red blob on the screen. And now I'm going to export as a wave. And I drew that so you wouldn't see all my personal stuff. Not that I have anything very personal. I'm calling this song zero. And there are some choices as to save type as and one moment other compressed files select wave and then select unsigned 8-bit PCM once again that's on the git GitHub TMR PCM page, which shows how to use Audacity and save your WAV files correctly. And I guess before we should have selected mono here. Okay, now hit OK. So yes, once again, before you started recording, you should have selected mono. Forgive me, because I know a lot of people know how to use this software. Myself included, I just wanted to show the correct steps, according to GitHub TMR PCM library. I spent about two or three hours very, very slowly building this Arduino and SD card module so that it can fit 
into my completed project. And it more or less matches the typical wiring diagram that most folks are using. All right, so once again, if you are looking for code to use with your Arduino SD card for the sake of running the TMR PCM library, then go to the maxovsky.com blog and I will leave a link for this in the description below. And this is better than the code I am using because I've modified my own code. And if you just want the basic code just to get you started, this is probably better to take a look at. So this is just an update as to how I've gone about creating a playlist that I am going to play. What I created once again was a variable called reading, which I didn't assign a value to. But in the void loop, this reading variable gets its value by reading the input pin. Input pin is also a variable I created and it is basically assigned to pin 5. Here it is declared as a constant integer and here it is actually made an input pull-up resistor. The project I am creating, which I won't go into detail about, relies upon a low signal to the Arduino to trigger the playing of a song. So what I did is I created a counter that increments each time and the way it increments is actually after a song is played. And how is a song played? Well, if this reading variable that I created equals equals low and j equals zero, then it will play the first song, and J has already been set to zero. When it plays the song, it adds one to the count for J, so J becomes a value of one. So then it goes through the loop, and if the reading is low again, if it becomes low at any point in time, and J equals one, then it'll play song one and then it adds one to the count so that when it goes through the loop again it repeats the process playing the next song if the reading of reading equals equals low and j equals two then it will play the song the playlist has fifty songs so then when it gets down to the last song j goes back to zero and it goes to the beginning of the playlist. If you watched my previous video, then you realize I tried to increment the name of the song, but I didn't have success at doing that. So this isn't really the best way to create a playlist, because if I want to modify this later and add songs to the SD card, then I have to go in and also modify the code and copy and paste additional lines of code to match the number of songs 
on my SD card. As can be seen with the Arduino Pro Mini SD card combination module I am using, there are many pins still left unused. And what I was thinking about doing is I was thinking about hooking up a rotary switch, say something like this. And there are four positions, I think, on some of these four selector positions. At least on the one that I have here at home. So then I was thinking of hooking each of the four rotary switch positions up to a pin on the Arduino. So that would be maybe four pins. Not pin nine because that's the output. But then I could maybe create different banks of songs. So depending upon which rotary position is selected, it would play a different bank of playlist songs. And I think that would be fairly easy to do because it would take a statement like if the reading is equals equals to low and j equals equals zero and and say pin six equals equals low then it would play like a different song maybe an if statement could follow this big long playlist here I haven't determined how exactly I'm going to write the code for that, but to me that seems fairly simple to figure out. Well, I think that's it for now, and hopefully I can put some of these ideas into practice and finish my project. Thanks for watching. This has been part three.